Welcome to the Seriously Social Podcast with your host, Simone Douglas. Our guest this episode is Sammy Glastonbury from Blanchbox. She and Simone talk about the evolution of her career, ethical marketing, and the power of breaking the rules. All right, so today I'm joined on the Seriously Social podcast by Sammy from Blanchbox. Sammy, thanks for joining me today. Thank you for having me. My pleasure. Uh, Perhaps we can start off by um, giving me the Cliff Notes version as to how you've ended up here today. So what's your background and what kind of things are you into? Sure. Um, So my background is I've had a small business Mm -hmm. called Blanchbox for coming up five and a half years. Prior to that, I was in the wine industry, so in sales and marketing for um, oh, close to 12 years. Yeah. Um, and we've recently, when I say recently, moved to Adelaide in the last three years. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it's been a big shift. So now it's about understanding kind of the Adelaide landscape, yeah. getting my head out of the country and um, yeah, and coming down and meeting people and doing exactly this, networking and finding out what people are doing. Yeah, awesome. Okay. Yeah. So... Um, who is your favourite type of client to work with at Blanche Box? So uh, I think that's a really easy one for me to answer and that is someone who is ethical mm-hmm. and has created a business or service that is going to leave a legacy or to better the environment for someone who's either um, receiving their service or um, buying products. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, anything cool. that's really giving, giving back, I think, to a greater good. Yeah. So what kind of advice would you give to someone who's maybe sitting at home uh, and they've got an idea for a product or a service that's going to make the world a better place? Because I think that we need more of those types of businesses we in the do. world. Yes. Um, and and they're scared of that leap of faith to get started because I think it takes a lot of guts mm. to start your own business because there are always people that tell you it's a bad idea. So Definitely. I think and exactly just picking up exactly what you just said, is talk to people, but don't talk to too many people. Mm. I find that that seems to be a, a recurrent theme when I speak to people is, oh, but I've spoken to this person. They said I should do this mm-hmm. and I should really look into this further or that before I do anything. And the big thing, which I'm sure loads of people say, is you just need to start. Yeah, You just need to start and you need to start to put yourself out there because one of the things that I find, especially if you do have that great idea, is you may think that you're going to help this group of people Mm -hmm. but when you find that you start that actually group of people evolves yeah and you speak to some there's another person that you're actually helping or contributing to yeah Yeah. cool um i think yeah it's very true i was having a conversation uh with one of my bni members yesterday like so he's younger than me i don't know how young but but he was saying to me you know uh, how do you go and find a good business mentor and what is a a mentor in terms because he wants to he's had his business for two years he wants to grow it um he wants to grow it the right way and instill a good culture um and i I ended up saying to him, I'm the worst person to talk to about mentors because I'll talk to anybody, like in terms of giving advice. Nice. And um, I said, and when it comes to listening to other people, they actually have to be, you know, have their own business. They have to have so experience. True. And they usually end up my drinking buddies, you know. So, <laughs> <laughs> so it, you know, they start off in some kind of professional <laughs> sphere and then it gets to a point where they, you know, they're in in my sphere because I, they're straight talkers and I like straight yes, talkers. Yes. So yeah. I love it. So you end up having a village of yeah. just frank conversations. Really? Yeah, exactly. I love it. Yeah. 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 So what's been the biggest challenge for you then coming into Adelaide? Um, I think the challenge has been just um, understanding the landscape and to be really honest, understanding that everyone in Adelaide knows everyone. Oh my God, yes. Yeah. So you hear it. Um, so I'm initially from um, Queensland. Yep. And so when I relocated down, um, I went straight to the Barossa. Mm-hmm. Um, so I had always heard that term, oh, everyone, you know, that's one degree separation yeah. and all the rest of it. So then coming to Adelaide, I think just kind of um, understanding that that is true. Yeah. <laughs> not that it not that it sort of matters or um, um, changes anything, but it's just been really interesting going, oh, oh, yeah, that's my brother. Oh, no, no, we used to all we yeah. to school together. Um, so that's been interesting. I think also, too, um, 
uh, understanding because of that there's a lot of people that are already connected yeah so therefore hence doing things like this for me is really important um, not only because well I love meeting people mm. and love hearing their story and what makes them tick but also to um, yeah getting broadening that network yeah, so yeah. I'm a big fan of that. When I talk about networking, which I do a lot, um, I say that you have to have like depth and breadth of your network. Mm. So, and for that to be successful, you have to have, you know, uh, gender diversity. You have to have generational diversity, cultural diversity, and then industry diversity. Oh. Um, once you can tick all those boxes and say, "Yep, actually, I have a fully functioning network that ticks all of those boxes." that's when you start to find the business starts to take care of itself. You get those referrals and those introductions mm. from a really wide sphere or you will bump into somebody um, and you'll be complaining about something like, oh, you need to go and speak to Sammy about that. Mm. She's amazing. Um, but it, t- it takes like five years to yeah. in, in Adelaide because like you said, everyone knows everyone. There's yes. all those connections and then you kind of have to earn your way in. It's a bit like being in a country town. It is. Oh my gosh, yes, it mm. is indeed. But I think um, I think following on from that too, it's, I think like you said, which I, I really like that part, how you said about the industry diversity, because I think it's, it's very common for people to sit in that same sphere yeah. and same space. So um, I wear sort of a couple of hats. Mm-hmm. I have three kids and my youngest has special needs and a complex health condition. Yeah. So I actually sit as a consumer advocate with the women's and kids I've oh, cool. sat on national boards and yep. so forth. So I actually have that different sphere. Mm. And that's funny you saying this because that's exactly what's actually helped expand my business. Yeah. Because it's been having those outside of non-marketing the cool kids. Yeah. That there's this another element. Yeah. Yeah. And it it does work that way in terms of, you know, those left to field relationships. Because, you know, like we were talking before, like earlier about... Uh, Rachel, who's a mutual friend, yes. um, but you know, I met her because she lives across the road right. from a very good drinking buddy of mine, <laughs> who happens to be one of my mentors that I had coffee with, you know, eight years ago. How so funny. yeah, so oh, it's just go. that's Adelaide. We it like is Adelaide. It's Adelaide. Yes, um, but I think too, it's also um, a lot of people in business don't appreciate the importance of kind of getting out of their comfort zone and and networking outside of the fish pond that they live in couldn't couldn't agree more and that's something that um in in my space in with blanche box i've diversified out of wine and i purposely did that uh, because of after having the experience of after having my son and so forth and um and that's so now I'm dealing with a lot of people who are wanting to uh, market themselves in the health sphere. Oh, yep. So I sort of more sit now, I suppose probably 60% of my client base is health marketing. Mm-hmm. And and that's one of the things exactly that I have that conversation because usually they come from a clinical background. Yeah. And so they're constantly thinking through, uh, and looking through eyes through a clinician's eyes, mm-hmm. which is great and it's very evidence-based. Yeah. But as you and I know, in the real world, um, not everything is evidence-based no. and not everything goes to plan and not everything yeah. is in a textbook. No, and health is a challenging one like that because obviously with the APRA guidelines, That's right. I know you know we have a lot of uh, dentists and physios on our yes. books um, and their level of risk adverseness yes. to stepping on the APRA guidelines is perfectly understandable for the health practitioners listening in today. We get it. Definitely. Um, but yeah, it does involve a complete mindset to be able to say to them, well, this is how we are compliant. That's right. Um, but still telling a story. Story. <laughs> and we're going to reach a market beyond yeah. the clinical sphere. Yeah. And we need to do that mm. to reach more people and for this to be a success. Yeah. Absolutely. And for you to ultimately do what it is that you're setting out to do and that is make a difference and help people yeah so we need to get you out there in front of people yeah for yeah sure. and so exactly that shifting that mindset of i remember a couple of years ago speaking with someone who was a clinician and was kind of like oh but i've got my network but my network is this and i was saying but your network is actually bigger than what mm. you're thinking it actually is. There's yeah. more people that connect in that need to know what you're doing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I think too, uh, one of the things that I often get when I'm coaching people on how to use LinkedIn properly yeah. is they'll go, oh, but I only want to connect to people that I know <laughs> and, and you know, in my industry and yes. in my field. Yes. And, and I'm like, 
would you like to sell stuff? Stuff. <laughs> yeah. And they're like, well, yeah, I, I, I'm like, you want more customers, yeah. Yeah. So it's, you know, my thing is I'll connect to anyone that either now or sometime in the next 15 years can either refer me to someone that might yeah. be able to use my services or might want them themselves. Yeah. And in, in doing that, I have picked up some fantastic clients by accident. Yes. Just by like, you know, I post content out there that's not white noise. I don't post very often on LinkedIn, yes. but when I do, it's because I've got something to say. say. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so you end up with these great inbound inquiries from people who go, oh, you posted something six months ago. Yeah. And yeah. that resonated with me. It's like opening, it's like opening the gate. Isn't yeah. It? It's like, this is your little house. Here's your white picket fence, but just open the gate. There's yeah. more people on the street. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I like that analogy. Yeah. That's really good. Uh, what would you say is... Um, the best piece of advice you wish someone had given you when you were starting your business that you can share with somebody else? Um, I think it's probably around understanding the type of client, mm -hmm. understanding the type of client. I think we all go into business and we sort of go, oh, it's a client. Oh, we have to take it on. I've just started out and I need to feed my family. Yeah, yeah well, that's <laughs> and I need to, And I need to pay this. But it's funny, I say that though into in two stages though because I think you need to do that mm -hmm. if you're not clear on who your client your ideal client yeah. is and what your if you're not clear on your offering but I think it's probably more so the advice that I wish that I I think I probably had people say things to me but I probably didn't it didn't resonate mm. and and that is that really think about your offering and really think about who your client is yeah but also to don't put a ceiling on it because mm -hmm. that client does evolve and does change yeah. to a point, a bit like opening the gate. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I suppose it's that. It's not don't take everything on. Mm. Don't take everyone in their kitchen sink. Yeah. Because usually I think you find that next minute you, you've gone down a bit of a rabbit hole yeah. and next minute you're going. And I think because you always want to be in love with what you're doing. Yeah. You, you want to get up and get out of bed and go, oh, I love what I do. Yeah because I help these people achieve mm. their outcome. But if you're kind of like, you know, going through the dirty dishes every morning, yeah, it kind of just takes the takes edge the, off. Takes the love out of it. It does, okay. doesn't it? Well, and I, I think that's got to be the payoff for having your own business is being able to work with clients that you enjoy working with on things that you enjoy working yeah. on. Yeah. Um, because there are certainly, you know, we have all the other stresses that go with having yes. your own business. Yes. Um, but, yes. yeah, it's funny. I this week's radio show was actually on understanding your best client. So, okay. And, um, you know, one of the things that I talked about on that was about, you know, it's, it's not just about classifying people into a class, B class, C class clients. It's about, you know, what type of personality of person do you like to work with or works yes. well with you? So when yes. I was an owner operator, you know, I predominantly worked with people that were high Ds on the disc profile because that's what I am. So yes. bullet point and bullet point, we were fine. Yes, you yes. Know? But if I if I got a C type client, then you know, like in terms of you know being very methodical and research based and wanting lots of detail, mm. it just took up all of my time, time, and I got frustrated. And then they'd get frustrated because I wouldn't give them the level of detail. Tell. You know, now that I have a team, I have some C type people and some S type people, yes. and I can just go, "Yep, here you go. This is your client. That's your client. You're yeah. gonna." work well together and that's so true isn't it mm. it's like um the lucy who works with me in my business yeah she's the opposite of me yeah and it works beautifully because exactly that she is i sort of sit in this fear like she is my she is my weakness yeah and i'm her strength yeah and, and perfect, all of that yeah. and so we work together but that's it's it's so true but i suppose following on actually from what you just said there i think that's the other thing is the the client questionnaire i'm now really i'm really um rigid on that, that yeah they must fill out that client questionnaire yeah, cool. that i put out which i never used to i used to think oh that's okay we've had a coffee we've had yeah. a chat or i'm pretty sure i i know what they want mm -hmm. but as you know when you actually get someone to write it on paper they actually take the time and they think more and it's they more yeah. than a hallway conversation or yeah. a coffee conversation. It's that you're actually saying, you know, who is this and what is this and what does yeah. and, and your why and all those sorts of things. So I'm a little bit more, um, I suppose, um, uh, clear on making sure that they, that, fill that, that in. they fill that in. Yeah. yeah. Well, and that would give you a really solid brief to start with, wouldn't yeah. it? So I yeah. think, you know, I, I'm a bit the same because I – 
often fly by the seat of my pants, which yes. is why I have lots of detail people around yeah. me because <laughs> I can't do the detail. I'm very good at creative and bright, shiny objects. Yes. I um, love it. Yeah, no, it's great. I think, uh, what was it, the other day we had a client on and um, – the team were struggling to come up with some big on six word stories so you need okay. to be able to come up with a six word story that sums up the emotional felt sense of what a client's going to have when they work with you okay yes. so you need to have that immediate reaction when sure. you say it um anyway so they were struggling with that and i went six words bang 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 i won't share what they are because they belong sure. to a client yes, now of but course. you know like yeah. like, but you know i was like oh it's this and, and they've looked at me and I'm like, please tell me you wrote that down because I don't know what I just said. <laughs> so, I love it. That's so true. Yeah, the so, amount of times exactly that, you exactly yeah. that you start writing or I start creating a tagline yeah. or something like that and I'm going blah, blah, blah. And then exactly that, I'm like, Lucy, you, you were doing that, weren't you? Yeah. When we, when yeah. We were t- while I was talking. Cause, yeah. Yeah. Because you need those people to do that. And it's just yes. because I, I don't know why. I think it's called creative amnesia or something. Is that what it is? Well, I'm, okay. That's what I'm calling it now. <laughs> We've turned it, it's a diagnosis yeah. now. Yeah. Creative amnesia. Because yeah. it just like drops that. out of my mouth. And I'm like, yeah. yep, it was brilliant. The client's eyes light up and you're like, <laughs> you know that you've nailed it. And then you're like, huh. and they'll go, Oh, so, you know, what did you say? Whenever I'm giving a keynote, that will happen, like, quite often because you'll be on stage and you'll be like, blah, 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 just talking and you're in the zone. Yes. Um, and someone will come up to you afterwards and they'll be like, oh, that was amazing, this, that, the other, and you're like, uh-huh. You're like, yeah, did cool. it? Okay. And did you yeah. write that down? Yeah. Did did someone film it? What's yeah. happening? So, yeah. No, just pop good. that on an email. That'd be great. <laughs> I would, I'll use that one again. Yeah, well, I got really <laughs> lucky once. Um, there was a journalist... Oh, he's from Flinders Uni, but he was a journalist and he was in the audience for like, I was delivering, you know, uh, digital trends for the year or something like that. And he, yeah. he literally took copious notes. He said, I've taken so many notes. I'm like, would you mind sending me through a copy? <laughs> he's would... like, yeah, sure. Absolutely. And I was like, oh, this never happens. This is great. Brilliant. Yeah. That's it. Do you want to hang around? Did yeah. you want to come around one day when we're doing a brainstorming yeah. session? Well, I said, oh, can, can I just invite, I'm happy to invite you to the, whatever I'm delivering next. Next. If I'll trade you, you know, I'll give you some free tickets. Brilliant. I love it. So, so what would you say is um, your biggest challenge or has been your biggest challenge this year? Because there's a lot of talk about, mm. um, you know, in 2020, um, you know, surviving COVID, thriving during COVID, pivoting. Mm. Um, where, have, where have you and Blanche Box found yourselves from that perspective? So we... COVID kind of, I suppose, I think because of having a son with needs and uh, who was immune compromised, I was watching things quite closely. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so probably, probably more so than probably the average kind person, of person, yeah. um, because it was it, it had a, a an immense medical impact on yeah. our family, which then has an impact on the on my business. Yeah, because it takes me away from the business. Yeah, of so, um, so I kind of preempted a few things. Mm-hmm. So I had a few conversations with clients and said. Um, you know, this is what's happening. Things are changing. I'm going to pick up that phone and have that conversation with you first because mm-hmm. I know it's going to be an uncomfortable phone call for you. You've yeah. got staff you need to talk to. You've yeah. got account, you know, your accountants. Mm. You've got this. You've got that. Your landlords. Mm. Um, so I sort of preempted a few things by by starting off those conversations, and that put things in really good stead in the respect that. Um, a bit like what you're saying before about that referral yeah. base was even though we lost clients, mm. we left on really good terms. Yeah. So they come back. Then. And exactly yeah. that. And so regardless of whether they'll come back to me, their thought and 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 um, and dealings with Blanche Box are mm-hmm. still really quite high. Yeah. So they're going to refer. Yeah. Um, but also too, that's a lot of who I am. I'm very ethical like that. So I preempted a lot and I suppose the big shift in my business is we wholly and solely focus then on just health clients. Uh So in a way, it was kind of nice because I felt that we actually really kind of refined and defined Mm -hmm. how we deliver health marketing. Yeah, cool. Um, And it was by obviously taking things that that were more so the norm in some of those other kind of sexier, fun kind of places like food and Mm -hmm. wine – and I actually started to apply some of that, those sort of insights yeah. into health, which sounds bonkers. No, but sounds let me bonkers guess you got really papers. good results, didn't you? <laughs> got great results. <laughs> That's yeah. right. So yeah. I think if anything, it kind of really, um, it kind of sharpened the pencil, mm-hmm. to be honest. So that was a that was a, an immense um, learning and growing and experience. Um, so that was great. 
I think um, the other thing that's happened, well, what I struggled with is not having the face-to-face. Yeah. And don't get me wrong, Zoom is great and I love the fact that people were embracing more of that digital space mm. and there was a lot of people that um, hadn't up yeah. until that point. Um, but I thought, you know how sometimes you actually need to sit with someone yeah, to and actually... Talk and understand. Yeah, yeah, and all those little cues mm. that you pick up from when having a face-to-face meeting. Yeah. So there was a lots, lots of phone calls... I think I was on the phone, I've, well, I'm sure like everyone, mm. on the phone as much as I could be as well as Zoom because I just thought Zoom is, is, is great. It's but, exhausting. Though. But it's exhausting. Mm. You could see that people were tiring. Yeah. You could see that people weren't truly understanding what you were asking or talking about. Mm. So yeah. that, that was a real challenge for yeah. me. No, that makes sense to me. I think too, just going back to what you were saying about Um, sharpening the pencil and changing the rules for health marketing Mm. Um, it was very much the same when I took over the pub three years ago because of course when you're doing hospitality marketing for other clients you have to work with where they're comfortable so you can push them a little bit Um, but you know like I didn't necessarily have any solid data that said if you let me do these things these are the kind of results that I can generate for you yes um but when I took over the pub I could do whatever the hell I liked, liked yeah and so and I did and it worked and I was like ah oh. and so then I could go back to so, you know yes. hoteliers and go no uh, if I see one more post about a ten dollar palmy and a pint if I see one more burger poster like you need human beings, you need to tell the story, Sorry. you need customers, you know, this, that, the other. Stop talking about, start identifying and doing implied selling instead of implicit so, selling. Yes. So, yes. Um, and I think that's where we're going. So I think it's a good spot to finish on. Um, it's been very nice to have you join me today. Yes. Thanks for coming in. Thank and um, it's me. always great to meet someone that is very relationship focused Um, because I'm a big fan of the fact that if you put the relationships ahead of the sales, the sales always come. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. And to be yourself. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. So thanks very much. Thank you for listening to the Seriously Social podcast. See our website for more details at www.socialmediaaok.com.au slash podcast. Check the show notes for credits, music used in the program, and more details about our guests.